Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And as we exit the transition period in a few weeks, for I assume that's still the government's plan, with or without a deal, the Conservative Party will want to be able to say that Brexit has been done. Given that, they'll want to get on with the business of having a tilt at winning the 2024 general election. In fact, I would expect a lot of Conservative MPs to turn their attention to that. Now, with the, gov the way the government's behaved in 2020, you'd think this would be challenging and would certainly need the continued support of opposition activists to do them a solid and repel voters like they've been doing over the last few years. But will the Conservatives themselves change tack once their mind moves off Brexit and onto elections? Hmm, let's see. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Boris Johnson is likely to be gone next year. The fact that Dominic Cummings is supposed to be leaving his post next month and has already been kicked out of Downing Street may buy Johnson some more time with some Conservative MPs, but they essentially know that he's useless. They've seen just how useless he is. They know that he's not a prime minister for real problems. They know they have real problems and their government are gonna carry on cocking things up on an almost daily basis whilst he remains in charge. And they always knew he was useless. This didn't, this, you know, some MPs seem to profess that this came as a surprise to them, maybe to some it did, but quite a lot of them knew he was useless at the start, even when they were supporting him as leader. I saw a report in the Times that's written from the point of view of wanting the Conservatives to win next time, because it's a Tory supporting newspaper, in which it referred to Conservative MPs who were supporting Johnson, but at the time going to him, look, mate, yeah, how are you going to manage this job when you're not, not really up to it, if we're going to be completely honest, are you? And he reportedly responded that he would fill his cabinet with giants. He was going to get some real talent in there to take over the day-to-day -day running of the government departments. After all, in theory, a prime minister doesn't really have to do a great deal. You know, if they've got competent ministers in charge of the departments, then the whole thing runs itself. The prime minister can look fantastic, do their PR stuff, which he's good at. You know, he... He has that sort of charisma. Would have worked, would have worked. Problem is that, that that's not what he's done, is it? This has not yet occurred. Is there any cabinet minister who has not disgraced themselves in a way that would have seen them fired before Brexit made them bulletproof? I can't think of too many and, and not really any of the serious ones. Maybe Rishi Sunak, you argue, gets a bit of a pass at the moment. He's still new in the post and if give it another six months and, and more poor conduct will emerge. Already we're seeing that he failed to declare his family's wealth on the Register of Ministers' interest. He's also been refusing to attend Treasury Select Committee hearings, showing the same disdain for parliamentary scrutiny as his patron, Boris Johnson. But will 2021 see Johnson, or any replacement, usher in a new cabinet? I mean, they've been making threats. That, that's probably another topic. The thing is that are they going to bring in a cabinet that that prizes competence? It doesn't look like it. I mean, it's possible. You can't rule it out. But the problem is as well, even if you wanted to, where do you get your talent from? Because when Boris Johnson purged the parliamentary party of the moderates, he also got rid of most of the brains as well. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some in the party who are the, the, the pro-Brexit nutters, but they're also intelligent. They know what they're doing. But are there enough bright sparks to competently run government departments, to fill the cabinet, to deal with the often antagonistic demands of governing for the next few years? So if we look at one of the big challenges, to some the big challenge that they face, not COVID, not even Brexit, levelling up the North. Now, amusingly, this Times article talked of being able to deliver on this promise because COVID economic woes aside, it would involve investment in capital projects so the money could just be borrowed. Now, we, we can leave that aside uh, for the purposes of this, but let's look at the modus operandum for investment so far, shall we? COVID has given us a real good glimpse into how these conservatives do things because faced with a serious problem, a genuine problem, not a political problem in the form of the COVID pandemic, they could and should have dealt with it properly. What I mean by that is investing in local NHS trust properly, allowing local responses to the pandemic, local testing, 
That way you wouldn't have to close down whole regions, locking them in these tiers. You would be able to do it on a, on a local level, identify flare-ups, deal with it there before it, it got out of hand. You would source your PP from reputable suppliers. You'd have a massive expansion, expansion of our publicly funded healthcare provision. What they actually did was to pump money into private hands. And now I don't mean, you know, suppliers of medical equipment. Of course, they're private companies. Money was going to private hands from that point of view. Of course. What I mean is the middlemen who neither make nor stock medical equipment. We didn't need them at all, but we used them. You know, they were given vast amounts of cash for simply ordering it from some bugger else and passing it on to the NHS. The Department of Health could have done that. The Department of Health and Social Care, that's what they do. They, they had the expertise to do this. They could have done this and they should have done this. And I know people will say, but you know, but that goes against the conservative way of thinking. It was all about the ideology. OK, sure. But but the furlough scheme went against that sort of thinking as well. But they still did it. And you know what? Rishi Sunak won plaudits for this action from both the left and the right of politics. It was the lone island in a sea of 2020 that actually had political unity. Sure, there were people that were left out from it. There were gaps in it, a bit of criticism there. But he only came in for serious criticism when he ended it and kept talking for months about how he was definitely going to end it. And although he did learn about the realities of frontline politics and have to U-turn, came a bit too late for some people. So if the Conservatives were prepared to adopt socialist policies in order to preserve jobs, which they did, they could have done the same in providing effective health care, you know, for COVID solutions as well. Had they done so, we would now be in the position where Labour would still be struggling to land any telling blows on the Conservatives, despite the new leader, because the government would fundamentally have steered the correct course, certainly a much better course, through the pandemic. One that would have compared very well with comparable countries, at least in the West. Probably impossible to replicate the success of Asian countries, but, you know, people in this country would have been happy not to compare themselves to those. You compare to closer to home. But no, Johnson and his party saw the crisis, as he said it himself, an opportunity to raid as much public money as he could. And here's the thing. Why would anyone think that they're going to do anything different with that capital investment in the north of England? I mean, sure, there'll be plenty of money splashed about. I've got no doubts about it. And the Conservatives will boast about all the money they've been spending in the north. But here's the thing about folk in the north. We'll need to see some results. Now, I'm not saying people anywhere else would be fooled by boasts of money spent if you don't see the impact. But the North, is, the north of England has been left badly behind. Even Conservative supporters accept that the government are going to have to deliver tangible improvements in order to win those seats back in 2024. Because here in the North, we're not by and large Conservative supporters. They're pockets. You know, people have given the Tories a chance. They shouldn't have done, but they did. But they'll want to see results delivered. They're not going to be fooled by more promises for shiny things just around the corner that never arrive. Some of them may even feel conflicted about voting for the Conservatives in the first place. But how will this be possible to deliver with the mindset that we've seen this year with COVID? Because if that it's all right talking about the money you've spent, but if that investment money is given to companies with no expertise in delivering those sorts of projects, or it's given to companies who charge hugely inflated prices because they have close connections to the party, or both of these things, then the projects will be just as much a mess. They will deliver far less tangible benefits, if any at all, as the COVID systems. Now let us imagine that you think that the reason for our poor COVID response has been purely down to Boris Johnson and Dominic Cummings. Boris Johnson's leadership is the reason here, and the bulk of the party would have supported more competent handling of major public, le public expenditure. Now, you know, as will be needed for this levelling up the North. OK, but then I have a question. So why hasn't the bulk of the Conservative Party up to now been putting pressure on Johnson to have gotten COVID right? Why didn't they force him to put someone qualified in charge of test and trace? Why didn't they force him to put someone qualified in charge of our vaccine rollout programme? Goodness knows how that's going to go. We haven't even seen that cock up yet. Why wasn't he compelled to actually get 
PP rolling in, instead of being supported to make up fantasy figures about what he's delivered whilst we're still going without and paying a fortune for it. If Conservative supporters, whether in the media or elsewhere, seriously think that there's going to be tangible improvements in infrastructure in the areas that lent them their votes in 2019 just because it's possible to do, I have to say, I don't think they're paying attention. That being said, I don't personally believe it is the be all and end all for 2024. I'm not sat here thinking, oh, well, they're never going to deliver it. Sarah, the Conservatives are definitely going to lose in 2024. A general election is never about one thing. Even in 2019, that was as polarised a general election as I think I can remember. And it had numerous factors culminating in the result. Brexit was just one of the biggest. There were other big ones as well. The same will be true in 2024. In fact, there might be a wider spread of issues in 2024. But if Conservative supporters, such as the author of this article, really do think that delivering on the promises given to the north of England are the be-all and end-all, I have to say, I don't really see how they've got much optimism. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.